So, so let's change the subject and ask I love a, subject change. a question that I'm hoping people will be interested in, which is how do we decide at Google what, what to release to and what not to release? So sort of, I know it sounds what's. weird, but we don't. I mean, we, you and I do not, yes. right? So, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> so I consider my job to be uh, one of uh, a policy role as well as one of a uh, facilitator, right? So a Googler wants to open source something, it's my job to help them do that. And so we grease all those wheels, get it out really fast. So if you're a Googler, you can release something in about three days. Uh, you know, all things going well, and most of the time, 99% of the time, there's no reason not to release it that fast. So, and that's how we've released so much from the software, is basically by getting out of the way of the engineer. So it's kind of like the engineer says, you know, I'd really like to open source this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> your job is to that's make that happen five percent of the code we released. It, right. That, well, 90%, right, depending on how you count it. Because, I mean, then you have projects like Chrome and Android, uh, Chromium and Android, and those are really big projects, hundreds of engineers working full tilt, right? And those were strategic decisions that were made at the very beginning these of those projects that these will be open source because that's what's right for the product, whether it's Chrome right. or Android or whatever. So, you know. so what And that's when we're most successful, I think, also as an organization in open sourcing things. It's actually quite hard to open source things <laughs> out of our standard sort of uh, Google.com backend code. Yeah. Because, you know, it's so complicated and it's so intertwined that when you go to install, you know, release something, you have to tease out things. <laughs> so what you're saying is it's spaghetti have. code. That, like, <laughs> no, it's not like that. It's not like that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure we have our share, right? But um, yeah. it's more that, you know, when you look at a company, you know, we've been around for 10 years, we have 10,000 technology professionals working for us, many of which are software engineers. And like they write 75 or so. We write a lot of code, <laughs> you know. And, and all that code is intertwined, right? You know, you have services interacting with each other and, you know, full data centers that are existing to, to handle all these calls and, and these requests and all the rest. I mean, all the way back to the, our systems management systems, I mean, it's all tied together. So when somebody wants to open source something, sometimes it can be really hard. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, this library depends on 27 other libraries. Yeah, and so, you know, you, so you end up doing a lot of stubbing out and all the rest of, of functionality that, you know, yeah. simply the, the outside world doesn't, doesn't want, doesn't care about. And, and it's in a lot of ways a hindrance to them. So we've written tools to help do that. So there's something called Making Open Easy that Dan Bentley presented on at OSCON that we're working on open sourcing as well, uh, which helps people basically automate the process of open sourcing. Mm. It does things, frankly, corporate things, like it takes out code words and yeah. know, internal URLs from the comments, but yet preserves those positions so that they can be re-added if we get a patch from the outside world. So I mean, it's very clever piece of software that Dan's been writing. I mean, it's it's. It's it's probably accelerated the ability of Googlers to open source things, you know, two times, three times, you know, because it makes every release easier, right? Um, as opposed to every release. So basically, the first release of a piece of software from Google before, looks like the third, like the fourth, you have to keep on removing things to get the new functionality out. Yeah. There. Now with Mo, you go through it once, you know, you make certain changes to the code, not significant but certain changes of the code, and then all subsequent releases are very efficient. So if you look at like a, the Clojure project, which has all the UI elements from Gmail, it uses Mo to keep things consistent from the outside world and the inside world. And so they've had you know tens, dozens of releases, whereas before, with a code base that large, we'd have one, maybe two a year. So it's pretty great. I like Mo because whenever you ask it what else I need to do, it always says, Mo. Mo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a, a joke from a very old movie called The Stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never ever ever go to a movie night with Jeremy unless yeah. you have tolerance for either zombie movies or you know, I, movies like Dark Star. Dark Star. I, Dark Star's a great. Dark movie. Star's a great. I movie. Have a, let's just say I have an interesting taste in movies. Yeah. So uh, how would you how would you define Google's philosophy around open source? Mm -hmm. uh, and because it, it's interesting that we release under many different licenses. How mm -hmm. do you decide what license something should go out under? Well, I mean, primarily, you know, when we're releasing something, if if there's already a license applied to it, GPL, whatever, then that's the right license, right? We're not yeah. going to go to somebody and say, here, take our patches under this other license and you have to change yourself. And Yeah, but that's, right. so that's obvious, right? Uh, when we again. do new things, what we do is, by default, we do Apache licenses um, and then BSD. But sometimes you say, you know what? The people who are primarily using this are running GPL software. They're running you know, LGPL yep. software or something. So, you know, release it under that license. So the idea is try to figure out where the users of the code will be or the developers of the code will be yep. and, and, and just use their license. Because the reality is most open source licenses we have no problem with. 
So, yeah. But, but yeah. When, when you're creating something new and releasing, the yeah. default is Apache. Yes. And so I'm kind of interested in, in the Why? reasons behind yeah. that. Why you made that decision? So usually when we release something from Google, from Google it's because we want people to use it. Right? Yeah. And right, yeah. Apache presents very, very few barriers to entry. The GPL, with its resharing requirements, can be hard for some people to accept. And so we actually want to remove that barrier of uncomfortableness with the resharing right. um, that, that comes with it. So we generally use Apache. And also, you know, the reality is, you know, Apache had, uh, especially when we started first releasing from Google, it had the only same patent policy attached to it. Mm. You know, it said, you know, any patents that we have, that we're exercising this code that you use, we're giving you a right to, provided you don't sue us. So if you sue us over patent infringement, you, you lose that right yeah. to those patents. But other than that, it's very fair. It says the users, we're not trying to take advantage of them, and they're not trying to take advantage of us, and it's very clear. And until GPLv3, you know, none of the copyleft licenses had that. So mm -hmm. it was pretty important, you know? Yeah. So yeah, GPL v3 now, yeah, is now a, a sane patent license. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's really good actually. And so, I, you know, actually, I don't mind releasing under GPL v3. But at the same time, you know, we're an Apache shop. We have been for a long time. Yeah. And also, the GPL, you know, if we release a lot of stuff under the GPL, we have to police it. And it's, uh, it's hard enough, yeah, it's hard enough educating people on the notification requirements of the Apache license. Uh, if we got into the resharing requirements of the GPL, it, it's a lot of work. And honestly, we don't have that many people working on open source here to want to do that kind of work. And also, you know what? It's kind of a hassle. It's tedious. It's <laughs> tedious. And we, we would rather concentrate on getting more code out there. And, and the thing is, you know, if you look at the different software communities out there, what dictates how healthy they are is never the license. It's always the health the, of the developers the and how they treat each it's other. So, you know, you, you have the Apache, like, you know, web server, you know, 60% of the market. And it's under the Apache license. Why does it keep on advancing? You yeah. know, can you give me a good reason? You know, it's not the license. No, because it's the people who develop it that matter, right? Same thing with the Linux kernel. You know, it's got yeah. all those weird exceptions to the GPL in it. Well, not, you know? not so many anymore. Well, I it's mean, got one or two, though, you know? Like the, the, the library's exceptions, you know, it has that explicit notice that if you use it in certain ways, you're not uh, you know, picking yeah, up the reciprocal clauses of the GPL. It's very close. It's very yeah. close. V2. V2. Yeah, V2. Right, like so... Um, yeah, so Which you, I think is a mistake, but you know, that's well you're you're a GPL. Yeah, I'm a V3 person, advocate. So. Yeah. And and if you look at it, look at Samba, you know, why does Samba continue to, to iterate? Right? Because you and Tridge and Volker and all those guys, you work together, you work together well for a better part of a decade, so the software continues to advance. Two decades now. Two decades. <laughs> Ooh, that's it, pretty old. I know. Uh, so yeah. so one of the things that I'm You're working I think, on software that's more than twenty years old, Jeremy. <laughs> I know. I'm an old guy, what yeah. am I going to say? <laughs> uh, one of the other things that I, I think you're quite famous for is you are one of the strongest advocates for sort of open source license defragmentation, for reducing yeah. the number of open yeah. source licenses. That's right, that's right. Um, so so that drives that, me crazy. Yeah, I, <laughs> you, you're the, the one who basically comes out and says, don't create any open source license. And, yeah. uh, uh, and, yet, and yet, we added um, AGPL to code.google.com. Well, we didn't add it formally. We added all OSI approved licenses. Ah, okay. You know, which is too many, by the way. They have some X60 approved licenses. Yeah. So, um, so how is your campaign going to reduce the number of licenses? You know, it's going okay. I'm going to declare victory, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Um, you know, licenses are going to evolve. And so what that means is literally there's more licenses today than when we started caring about this 10 years ago or whatever. And so... Um, that's fine, right? I think that there's been a trend, and unfortunately this is more inspired by my gut and a little bit by the research we've done, um, to not use these unusual licenses mm -hmm. uh, like the, you know, the new copy lefty yeah. licenses, right? So, so the first that's new a, vanity licenses got created. Which is really good. Well, I think yeah. that message has gotten through the vanity licenses. They're stupid and just stick you in some ghetto in the corner, you know, yeah. that nobody wants to play them. You know, um... Solaris. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I mean, I, you have to realize, I think that Sun, by releasing Solaris under its own license at first, and then GPLv3, uh, which was good, the whole point of that was that they didn't want people to mix Solaris technology into Linux, because they yeah. thought it was a competitive threat. Yeah. Right? And, and they, they were, were right. right. Yeah, <laughs> you know? they were right. So that said, it's, it, was, it felt as ingenuous to do that, because I think that they could have had a better Solaris if they had allowed Linux to adopt its greatness. Yes. And then they could have just used Linux, you know, on their machines, yeah, they could have, and they could yeah. advance their machines accordingly. But I understand the motivation there. It's it's too bad. But, you know, around 
It, it's other still unusual CDD only. Oh, they never made a GPL 53? They've never, never Because they had talked about it. You know? No, that was never changed. Oh, they never changed it. So that's useless. Yeah. You know, because nobody's going to commit to CDL projects. I mean, they might a little bit, but Solaris just simply isn't popular enough to drive that. Yeah. And frankly, unfortunately, it comes down to, you know, how I talked about it. It's not really the license to the people. You know, Solaris doesn't really want patches. You know, they really, well, you know, yeah. Yeah, and not you anymore. Know, you know? And actually, people have accused <laughs> yeah. us of doing that in Android, too. But, I mean, I, I see patch flow through JBQ, so that's kind of wrong. But, um, you know, yeah, it's it's one of those worlds where it's like, it really comes down to the people, not the license, and, and the plans of the projects. 